Hello, everyone, and welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. The Snap Grand Prix, the tournament that we just promoted, took place over this weekend, and we've got the top 16 decks to talk about. You heard that right. The top 16 decks with full deck breakdowns for the top four. We've got a last chance review of White Widow, a giveaway, and so much more. Let's get started by telling you about... Well, the Snap Judgments League. The Snap Judgments League Season 2 is kicking off next week. Signups end next Monday, 5-5. We have a $700 prize pool. The ter- way the turn works is you get put into a pod of about 30 players. You play one game a week until each pod is down to a top 8. That top 8 will play to move on to a winner's cut. There will be prizes for each pod and then prizes in the winner's as well so you have tons of chances to win in this tournament you have all the chance to play the best competition if you want to play great marvel snap content creators like lambie tucker and so many more please 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 sign up to the snap judgments league you can sign up either on the patreon using the one dollar tier or get on the discord you're going to need to do both but you can start in either spot whatever makes you happy check it out i hope you join i don't think you'll regret it so far our turns have been a rousing success thanks to gunny t and you're going to want to be a part of them all right the top 16 decks so these are in no particular order just when they got eliminated decks eliminated in the round of 16 were gatos loki which is really rough because uh gatos was um, completely undefeated King of Swiss and ended up um, losing that first top 16 round and was thus eliminated. We still sent him a top eight prize because that really sucks, but still. Uh, Div Annie Hawk, Don of Destroy with the classic Destroy. Mr. High Annie Power. Sanatora brought Phoenix and made the cut. Johnson played a junk deck. Yes, the famous Johnson of Johnson Cup fame. Sixational played Lockdown. Dubos played a Loki Lockdown deck. Uh, lockdown deck. Excuse me. Um, Primus is a player who dropped before the cut. He was unfortunately unable to make the cut, but would have made it. He played a Loki list. Um, Wee Wee, apparently I didn't write what Wee Wee was playing, but we'll get to that list in a few minutes. Zero played Loki. Riandi played Loki. Ishan Jane played a Thor's list. So we've got some stats between groups one and two. And at the end of the group two, the people who made the top eight, but not the top four, we will do our giveaway. I'll announce our giveaway. Ready? Let's go. Our first list is the Gatos Loki tech. This was the King of Swiss. This is a nice standard Loki list that looks, honestly, almost identical to the, um, oh my god, his name is gone now, to the list that's number one on the infinite leaderboard right now. So this is a standard Loki list. I told you yesterday I thought Loki was the best deck in Marvel Snap. Well, this performance, the performance in this tournament is part of the reason why. It is right now the top one, two, and three players on the infinite leaderboard. And it dominated this damn tournament. This list, again, was number one in Swiss. It is as straightforward as you get. It's running a fundamental um, Kitty Angela Elsa power engine and hope for an energy engine. And then Mobius and Shang for counters. And the rest of the cards are the Loki baseline. We're also going to be seeing an awful lot of Jeff in these lists. Our next list is Div called this Vienna, but we should know this list. This list with one card different just won the Snap Judgments League Season 1 in the hands of Slush Death. It was running Nico over Echo, but it is otherwise the exact same list that won the Snap Judgments League. This is a legitimate list. It's still got a 60% win rate now in a really, really big sample size, all at the top of Infinite. It made the cut in this tournament. Div took it here and made the top um, the top. 16. If you would like to see some gameplay for this list, please check last Monday's video where we have both the semifinals and the finals of this list in the Snap Judgments League. In fact, if you want to see gameplay from this tournament, the top um, 16, the with one game stream from the top 16, one game stream from the top 8, both top 4 and the finals are all on its, its guest gaming YouTube channel and Twitch stream, so you can check that out as well. I commentated on one of the top 4 matches. All right, next up, we have Donov with Classic Destroy. This is the standard Destroy that runs Shang-Chi. We've all seen this list. This list has been around for freaking ever. It made the cut, only one of it, and uh, fell out in the top 16. If you asked me to guess in advance, this is what I would have expected. One of these gets played, one of these does well, but eventually it just sort of falls on its face in a hard matchup. We have Mr. High's Annie Power. This is sort of similar to that previous list. It's running... um, 
sort of a lockdown shell with some Annihilus stuff. Uh, it puts a lot of power on the board. Call Obsidian's really good with Professor X. If you can get that going, you can um, still play Annie. If you do that in a right lane, you can play Sentry to end the game. It's got a mini mill package, not the full mill package. It's not bothering with Yandu, but it's got Zemo and Gladiator. I keep being told mill is tier one and the best deck. This is one of the very few Zemo mill decks we're going to see, but it did make the round of 16. Next up, we have Sanotar's Phoenix Force, uh, spelled almost uh, like it's Spanish, but that would be an F instead of a PH, but still super cool. This is a Phoenix Force list. This is our standard list um, with the Living Tribunal in that swing spot. That swing spot is often changed. Sometimes that's Arnim Zola. Sometimes that's, uh, I mean, it's like 15 different cards. We get the idea, right? In this case, with the one that made the top 16, Sanotar, a phenomenal player who's often at the top of tournaments, played Living Tribunal in the spot. Tribunal's okay for the Multiple Man and Nimrod play lines, but what Tribunal really shines for is um, if you get yourself a nice, ridiculous Human Torch, thanks to cards like Doctor Strange and Ghost Spider, then you can just um, leave that Human Torch in a relatively safe spot, right? You don't have to worry about it. Um, bring it out into the open so it can get shonged, where um, the opponent will assume you're going to Zola it, and then Tribunal will win. The top 16, however, was open deck list, as in everyone knew what each other were playing, so you don't get that extra trick play like you do when it's um, closed deck list for Swiss. Next up, we have Johnson's MB Junk. Johnson is, again, an extremely, extremely famous and important to the Marvel Snap metagame player. Johnson brought a... I don't even know how to describe this exactly. It is a junk list. Uh, this is one of two lists that we're going to look at that I'm pretty sure we're going to end up doing full deck guides on down the line because I think that there's something legit here. We've seen versions of this from um, from Dickens and from Butt that run a Pixie and Colson package. Um, Colson, there it goes. Pixie and Mobius package. Instead of that, this is running Beast and Carnage and saying I've got more things to do with my junk instead of just trying to like junk it up and um, have to send everything across with Annihilus or worry about that strike. Let's use that junk for Mockingbird. Let's use that junk to make a big carnage. Let's bounce that hood back, get a couple demons because, you know, 12 power for two energy is an awful lot, that kind of thing. So I think that's a really, really cool way of doing it. Um, it's still got a little bit of counterplay in Cosmo. I really like White Widow into Cosmo. I think it's a really great idea. A lot of opponents won't want to play into a Cosmo, right? Filling that Cosmo lane is a problem because they don't want to lose all those abilities. And if they're trying to fill that Cosmo lane, well, guess what? They're, if they can't fill it because they don't deal with Cosmo, they're taking that negative four. And I think that's really powerful. You also, of course, have the power of dropping uh, Sentry on Cosmo. Johnson's deck is very cool. I have a feeling we're going to be seeing this again in a full deck guide down the line relatively soon if this catches on at all. Next up, we have Sixational's a Lockdown List. This is the only version of this type of lockdown we're going to see. Um, this is the... I mean... Is it, though? Like, this is sort of similar to the lockdown that, um, his name is now escaping me, that, why is the entire community's names now gone? Uh, Ordinary Harry was playing, but that was running, like, a mill package with its Dr. Octopus magic stuff. This one is instead doing a lockdown package, saying, I'm not going to leave you space to play. I don't care if you have cards or not, but between Titania, White Widow, Green Goblin Debris, you don't have room to play. So when I Dr. Octopus you, um, I can just cannibal and win. Professor X can win, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can have an extra turn, but you can't do anything with it. Very cool list. Managed to make the top 16. Finally, this is the second list of the top 16 that I'm pretty sure we're going to see again. Our friend Dubos. I wrote Santi by accident. Our friend Dubos uh, crushed with this lockdown list. This is, I think, going to be a Metal Loki list, straight up. I love this list. I think this is absolutely brilliant. White Widow goes incredibly with Professor X and Cannibal. Absolutely incredibly with those cards. It's also really, really good with Ms. Marvel. This deck is, I think, running just the three best in slot two cost cards in the game right now. I would argue that White Widow, Cable, and Jeff are the three best. Like, if I'm not doing any shenanigans like Angela or like trying to do like destroy shenanigans, so Carnage, right? Like, the just best in slot good stuff twos are here and then the threes are like your counter plays and then we're just doing some powerful stuff for the rest of the curve i think this deck is brilliant huge props to santi i wish this deck i uh, sorry for, to dubos i wish this deck went further you can find dubos at twitch.tv slash dubos with a couple s's brilliant deck huge props all right our last deck this is primus's loki this is again the standard loki it's got a gladiator um 
and it's running the Kitty Angela package. Gladiator just being a 3-8, so it's a lot of stats. That's the whole reason it's in the list. This is our standard old Loki list. Uh, this is the list that was dropped before the cut. We have no idea how it would have done, but I didn't want to leave it out. All right, so I grabbed, um, I just went through manually and looked at the top 16 and counted some cards. Almost half of the top 16 was Loki decks. So that's completely insane to me. Loki is that powerful. Uh, Red Hulk, a week after his nerf, I think before the nerf, we would have seen more Red Hulk in the cut, but we're down to one Red Hulk in the cut. The every damn deck cards, Shang-Chi is in nine of the decks and Jeff is in 11. That's yes, over 50%. That's insane. Those are two of the most powerful cards in the game. I think, um, I thought White Widow would make Jeff less, less played. In fact, it makes it more played because it gives you optionality as people try and do junk. Um, Nico and Gladiator are another two best in slot cards, and they're both in five of the decks. Annihilus in four and Zemo in three. I kept being told how powerful these were. I've been um, told in multiple videos throughout the week that these are better than Loki, that these just dominate Loki, and um, not according to the numbers here. All right, next up, we have Wee Wee's Annie Ronan. These are the decks that made it to the top eight, but no further. So this is a really cool list. This is sort of a combination of two lists. Um, this is a combination of the Stefan um, Ronin Annihilus list, and a and it's sort of mixed with the Dubos Ronin Annihilus list that we featured last week or two weeks ago. Time has lost all meaning. So this is a very cool list, very powerful. It's um, the Ronin package is severely slept on and underrated because it can be scary and frustrating. But if you can, um, particularly if you can get that Maximus out early, there's just a lot to like here. You can also just Cosmo and Maximus when you don't do the Ronin thing, Cosmo and Sentry, and just get an absolute ton of power on the board. There's, again, a ton, ton, ton to like about this list. Um, this is another Nico list, another Jeff list. These cards go in freaking there. Next up, we have Zero Loki. Uh, we, we're going to see two Loki lists that run Gene and Cosmo. I'm going to save that discussion for later, but this is what looks like a standard Loki list, and then you see Gene and Kazu, and you go, whoa. Still, cool list. Zeru is the player who made the cut because of the drop, and look, he acquitted himself well, making the top eight. Next up, we have Riandi's Loki. Um, this is another Loki list. This is a very different Loki list than the others. I mean, not very different. It's running quite similar cards. But the Devil Dinosaur and Iron Lad are quite different here. Um, you can still see a lot of the other same cards, like Cable and Jeff and Shang-Chi, um, as like the filler positions. But Ms. Marvel offers a lot of power. Iron Lad offers you an extra chance to draw cards or an extra shot at Loki. And Devil Dinosaur is just a lot of power. I like this list a lot. I am um, I think this kind of Loki list tends to be particularly good into the mirror. It, until, like, you drop a Devil Dino and then they get your Shang-Chi for cheap. And you don't have a Shang target, but they do. And then you're in sort of trouble. But, like, Ms. Marvel does a decent job of making up for that. So, I don't know. I really, really enjoy this list. I think this is very, very strong. Um, even if Mockingbird's still probably a little better than Devil Dino. It's just Iron Lad is so much better with Dino than Mockingbird, right? All right, finally, this is the weirdest list that made the top eight. I'm impressed. I hope you are too. This is uh, Ishan Jane's Thors. Ishan Jane makes a ton of top uh, cuts in tournaments, made the top eight here. This is a Thors list that runs like the Odin package, right? It's also running an Angela Kitty package. It's also running the control package of Shang and Enchantress. Um, but then it's also just casually running magic, so it has extra turns to draw its hammers and do its thing. I think that's, I don't even slightly get the vision, but whatever. I mean, it's for the Angela, right? But like, wow, this list is so like completely interesting and different. Um, if you can get those hammers, if you can go magic on, um, five and then you draw that Jane on six and then you can do hammer, hammer, Odin, you're likely to win that game, right? You leave yourself open to a Shang. But there's still so, so much power here. Uh, I'm especially impressed that this list went so far with all the Lokis because Lokis have Snow Guard, and Snow Guard is, excuse me, so frustrating and bad for magic. Okay, so our giveaway time. We're giving away two season passes. Yesterday, and hopefully not today, the video, and for the last three minutes, the volume completely died. Um, my son had woken up, it was like midnight, and I had to rush to put him back to bed, and I didn't notice the video went live, so I decided to do a giveaway to make it up. We're giving away two season passes. In order to win, sub and like this video, and then comment your favorite deck from the tournament. Which of these 16 decks do you like the best? And explain in a sentence or so why. 
If you have this month's season pass, Baron Zemo, you can choose next month's, which is Blink. Don't forget, we will be reviewing Blink in a week, as we always do. All right. The fourth place deck is Dr. Joint. Great and hilarious name for someone who played a Toxic deck. Fourth place, Toxic Guardians 2.0. This is our uh, Zemo list number two, I want to say. This is a take on the, it's slightly different. I think it's running Ghost over Maximus, which is brilliant because Hazmat, right? Um, it's running Ghost over Maximus, and it's running um, Red Guardian over Gladiator. Something along those lines. No, no, Red Guardian was in both. Uh, something over Gladiator. Whatever, who cares? Either which freaking way. This list is sick. This is basically Bradsifer's list. You can check out. Bradsifer has a video on this list. Um, I sent a bunch of people to watch it because I thought this list was so cool that you should go watch Bradsifer play it. And hey, look, it just made the top four of a 200-player tournament. So this is now not only a really good list, but a proven list. And those of you who keep telling me you want lists that are better for Conquest, that's this video. But this deck in particular is significantly better in Conquest than on Ladder because you need to be able to figure out where and how you're going to use your cards like US Agent and Man Thing. And Conquest gives you time to know the opponent's deck well enough to be sure what to do. Also, I think the Zemo is wildly interesting in this list because there's not really much other mill. Zemo is just sort of an extra card because it's a decent power. That could, again, be Gladiator here. I'm pretty sure that's the change. All right, so this is built for US Agent Man Thing. You need them. Red Guardian can be Rogue, Mobius, or Cosmo. You lose a bit with each, but not too much. And Zemo can be Gladiator, or honestly, Zemo can be Maximus. I love the Ghost change, and I would not remove the Ghost change. So this loss to my lead, the second place finisher. Uh, turn one, you pass because you have no ones. Turn two, you're trying to drop Lizard if humanly possible. I would almost never play US Agent on two unless I also didn't have a three, and I'm really, really never playing Hazmat on two. Turn three is Zemo is versus Red Guardian versus Ghost. So I generally want to prioritize getting Ghost out because I think it's useful later. If I know my opponent is playing like um, a discard list, right? Then I'm trying to save Zemo for later, but I'd consider an earlier Zemo if I know most of their deck is high power things. And Red Guardian, you play when it's a counter, although it is still very good stats. Turn four is Swamp Thing or Mary. If they played a bunch of low low power things, Swamp Thing is better. If not, Mary is better. Totally fine either way. If you play Mary, know that you need to get Luke out or Enchantress it though. So be careful with that Typhoid Mary not to play it where you're going to play another ongoing because you are again going to Enchantress there. You can also, if they played an ongoing that you might want to target, drop Typhoid Mary into that lane, knowing that your Enchantress might come there. Turn 5, Sarah is your goal. Or, if you don't get Sarah, you're going a 3 and a 2, which would be Luke and US Agent as a general rule. And then turn 6, you're dropping all you can, and again, Luke and US Agent are the priority. Um, Hazmat is also really important. Worth noting, though, if you're going to play Shang-Chi, make sure you drop Shang before Hazmat where possible so you don't accidentally lower things below the range of Shang and regret it. And that's how you play this list. It is very strong and very cool, and I cannot urge you to try it out. Uh, Infinite Conquest opens tomorrow. Try this list out. I don't think you'll regret it. All right, please hit that sub, like, and comment button. We bring you more Marvel Snap content than everyone. This video is covering 16 full decks in addition to a giveaway, in addition to a bundle guide, in addition to questions of the day, and so much more. Hopefully, we earn your subscription and earn your support here on this channel. And for those of you who are subbed, we greatly appreciate you. Please continue to like, comment, and spread the word. Watch as long as possible to help us out. Questions of the day, and we will go quickly because I'm aware that this one is going to be a long one. Lucas Leone has too many decks for the deck slots in the game. Uh, it, I, we want more deck slots. I'm trying to bring this up to secondary. I think everyone is. We need more deck slots. They can sell it to us, I think, at this point because we just need more deck slots if they don't have uh, enough space built into the game. More deck slots with, at this point in the game's history are just important. Steam Fry asks why 2099 doesn't kill the highest cost or power, and I think the answer is honestly, um, he'd have to be very, very differently costed, right? Like, he could be a 5-5 five, five or 5-6 five, at that point, but he can't be a 5-9, but it's also probably fine. Um, he It would still take two cards. It would take Ghost Spider or something to move him. It would take Heimdall to move him, so it's still, like, likely a semi-okay change with that power change. I just think that they don't care. He's now a Series 3 card, right? So, like, I don't think they care enough to change him anymore. He's a 5'9", he's fine, he's not good, but he's not terrible, and they're fine with just leaving Spider-Man 2099 in that space. I wish they had made him better as well, but we are where we are. Mozamali asks what Power Creep is. Power Creep is when they release new cards that are just straight up more powerful than old cards. 
cool. Power creep is um, new cards that fundamentally invalidate your reason for playing older cards. Uh, Gladiator says, I don't usually need to run Spider-Man or Polaris as my big 3-5. Used to run 3-5s because that was the biggest thing you could run at 3, right? You don't do that anymore because Gladiator power creeps them out of the meta. That's basically the gist here. Um, I dis I reviewed the Vanish and Style bundle yesterday, the Invisible Woman bundle in the shop, and the audio was cut for that. So here's the quick and dirty answer. Uh, Marvel Snap sells us consistently in these bundles. You should be getting, for about $60, 6,000 tokens, which means a new card is the cost of a video game. I'm aware. I didn't just determine the pricing. But this bundle equates to exactly that. So if you're okay with that price point, then this is a decent bundle. And if you like the variant, because the next bundle that has tokens is very, very likely, as long as it's cash, to have the exact same rate of something like um, $60 for 6,000 tokens. If you'd like your question read out in actually Wednesday's video, tomorrow is a two video day because we have new card day for Valentina and we have a patch that is sure to be huge. So you'll get two videos tomorrow. If you would like a question read out in Wednesday's video, please leave one in the comments. We're going to try something different Wednesday, so I really hope you all like it. Our number three deck is Comey's Loki List. This is the, se the second Loki List that's running the Jean Grey Cosmo thing. Please note, no Hope Summers in uh, the top Loki list. I think hope is fine in these lists, but not like really a requirement, not really necessary for this type of list. Um, so what Gene and Cosmo are doing here is like anything that's ongoing, but like particularly Hella just dies to Gene and to Cosmo. A um, surfer list dies to Gene and to Cosmo, right? You, the goal here is to use that Gene and to Cosmo play to shut down combo things that might be able to eliminate you before you get to the top. At this point in the meta, um, the Cosmo and Gene are still powerful, but they're no longer nearly as required. Everything else about this list is your standard Loki list. Tanjo, that's the player whose name for no reason jumped out of my head. The current number one player on Marvel Snap's Infinite Leaderboard is Tanjo, and plays a Loki list that's fairly like this. It's just not running the Gene and... Um, I think it's running, it actually might be running Hope instead, but whatever. It's a very powerful list, obviously very strong, and knows exactly what to do. So Comey's is the current Snap Fan World Champion. There was this big series of tournaments that led to a tournament of champions that Comey's won, came in first place as the World Champion, and finished third in this. Comey's is an Italian player, one of the very best in the world. I would argue that Comey's is easily top three to five in the world. I think the best players in the world right now are Lambie is just, Legacy is still in, Comey's, FAK Crazy, Tanjo, and then the fifth we'll talk about in two minutes. The fifth person I'm going to mention is my current number one. Told you who he is before. So Jeff for this deck can be Sentinel Mirage. Kitty is needed. You can try Hope for Elsa. Um, I know that's replacing uh, just with another Series 5 card, but I don't know what to tell you. Loki is needed. Snowguard can be Maria Hill, but hopefully if you play Loki, you got Snowguard. Snowguard is so important for these lists. Gene Cosmo is the Hella Killer, but you can go with Mobius, Devil Dino, Mockingbird, whatever. Check other Loki lists if you're looking for changes. We've gone through like five other Loki lists at this point. Mix and match as you feel necessary. All right. Comey's is, again, a brilliant player. One of, again, without much argument, one of the five-ish best players in the world. So turn one is Quinjet versus Snowguard. Um, you it's really hard to decide. I don't know if there's a sure heuristic. I tend to drop Quinjet first. Um, I think I'm pretty good with Loki. I'll explain it in a minute. Those are better than Kitty. Kitty is an enable. You're not trying to get Kitty huge as a general rule for this list. Like if you're going to Kitty and Elsa, I tend to make the card I'm playing with Kitty bigger, just in case at the end of the game I can't get my Kitty down. Um, so like if I'm going to play Kitty and Jeff on to fill a lane, right? I'll try and make the Jeff bigger because then I know the Jeff will stick on the board. Uh, turn two. Angela over Cable over Jeff. You want to get Angela down because obviously scaling Angela early is good. Getting a Jeff and Kid on Angela lets her have more triggers. And if you can make her a 4 8, she's uh, sorry, a 2 8, she's basically the biggest two. Um, and you can get her to well above that. Turn three is Colson versus Elsa. If you if you're going to Loki and you haven't drawn cards, then you want a Colson. If not, Elsa is phenomenal. I love getting if I can go like if I end up going like Snow Guard into Cable, I am perfectly happy to play Elsa and then Loki. Those are better than Gene. Gene lets you get a Cosmo set up or get Disruption set up. Um, turn four is Loki or turn three. And if you play Gene, obviously Cosmo suddenly makes sense. Five is still Loki. And then turn six is Shang and whatever the heck you can. 
third place list this ended up losing to the winning list one last look at it again this is basically the tanjo list with a card or so different built to stop combo in addition to win the other matchups all right this is my snap season recap i just wanted to note and like this is honestly for long time viewers if you're just checking in um i was i rank i sit around rank ten thousand. right i don't play that hard or competitively i'm decent at the game but like i'm very good at the game but like i'm not i don't have time or energy i do i spend a lot of my time making content right i'm a father i'm a union person um and i'm a teacher so i don't have a ton of time to really grind and my extra time goes to this so i was on a podcast with den and we're arguing about loki den doesn't did not think loki was good i would bet you his opinion has changed but den did not think loki was very good um and i was like i keep winning with loki i don't know what to tell you and he's like well if you're so good with loki why are you are you sitting at 10,000? I was like, I don't play enough and I have to play 15,000 different decks because I cover three new decks a day. He's like, that makes sense to me. So this is just my point of like, hey, by the way, I wasn't kidding about like being really good with Loki. Uh, I did not play Loki pre-infinite once this season and I maintained a 76% win rate against all real players with Loki um, in the deck, not necessarily played. Just for the record, I'm really good with Loki. After seeing the 76%, I needed to finish some dailies, and I played Loki for that. I actually played, uh, well, I played the uh, FAK Crazy Loki, and I went 12-3 and three immediately for an 80% win rate on top of this 76% win rate, so it would be even higher. I am good with Loki, but I don't think it's me. I think if you're good with Loki, Loki is the best deck in the game right now. I just do. Nico is basically like my favorite card. It's my most played card almost every season. I put it in every deck or almost every deck. And the 78% of life is Big Baby it released a um a zoo deck that had Lyth at the top end, and everyone thought the deck was completely dead when um when Eliath was changed, and I just started playing it again, and it was great, and no one ever expected Eliath, and it won me a lot of cubes, and I had a really good time with it. And I don't care about the location stuff. All right, enough of that. Let's keep going. Our number two list is our friend Miley's Loki. Yes, two friends of the show, two people who exclusively send us their decks, made the top two. So this is uh, Loki's Miley's Loki list, which is running a mill package, which makes it closer to the crazy version than the Tanjo version. These are the two versions of Loki that are competing for the top of the infinite leaderboard. I promise you, number one is not Loki. You're still like, if you don't know what it is, you're going to be like, what the? no way because i don't think it's a tier one deck i think it was just piloted like a freaking beast by the best player in the world so this is Lo uh, miley's loki it is running a bunch of the standard stuff right and then it's got this tiny mill package because you've got cable so baron zemo makes some sense right so like if you've got cable zemo all of a sudden makes sense and so does gladiator because now like you've got the extra stats the extra mill sometimes that just wins you a game right like if you've got a draw card now they run out of cards and you're just ahead Quake is also just a way to steal games. Quake is better in Swiss than the cut when opponents don't know it's coming, but it is often hard to play against. And finally, we have Red Guardian as a tech piece, which I think is a very, very cool add. Uh, the Baron Zemo thing also makes the Mockingbird a little better. It, it sort of combines to be really good. So for the mill version, you need Zemo and Gladiator. And again, if you don't have Zemo and Gladiator, there's a thousand other versions of Loki to choose from this video. Mockingbird is also a part of why you mill, because that Zemo is going to give you that extra card that uh, Cable's giving the extra card that Loki is going to give the extra card. So those extra cards that make Mockingbird cheap. Red Guardian is fine as Rogue or Mobius. It is not a terribly important card, although it can be very good. Jeff can be Sentinel or Angela. Angela is perfectly fine with just Jeff, even if there is no um, other real way to trigger it extra. Angela is just a lot of stats. And finally, we have uh, Snow Guard can be Maria Hill, but again, hopefully you have Snow Guard. So Miley chills in the top 10 to 20. He's a player in, um, on the Asian server, and he is phenomenal at Marvel Snap. If you watched his games, you know exactly how true that is. Um, he's also a friend of the show. Hi, Miley. Hope you're enjoying the video. So turn one, Quinjet is um, the play, or Snowguard is the play. Again, we've discussed that change before. Turn two, I want Keeble in this list over Jeff like a 1,000% of the time. And then you're choosing Coulson or Gladiator. I don't usually want a Zemo on three, I would rather Zemo later in the game, give them more chance to draw stuff so I can hopefully get something big. Tolson means I'm going to Loki. Um, Gladiator means I have stats um, because I did my drawing already and I don't want to fill my hand. Turn four is usually Loki and now I'm going to Zemo. Likely, I'll still Gladiator or still Colson, but Zemo's much, much more likely. 
Um, you can also occasionally get a Mockingbird out on turn 4 if you're forced to Zemo on 3. Turn 5, Loki over Mockingbird over Zemo. And turn 6 is supposed to be Quake and Shang or Mockingbird or Zemo. Your job is to try and go wide and put out enough power to win the game. One last look at this list. Again, this is a brilliant list. I really, really love the inclusion of Quake. Quake is a cube stealer, and I'm not surprised Miley made the cut with Quake in the deck, because Quake is a way to say, um, you thought you were going to beat me because I didn't Loki, but now all the locations are mixed up and I win. All right, before we get to the last deck, the last chance review for White Widow. White Widow 2-2, unreveal at a Widow's Kiss to your opponent's side of the location. Widow's Kiss is a 0-0 with negative 4, as long as your opponent hasn't filled that location. And if it has fill, has filled location, it's a 0-0, right? Uh, White Widow is one of the best in slot twos. One of the questions that's going to be asked a lot going forward is what? how do I replace White Widow? I don't think it's as good as Jeff. I thought it would be around as good as Jeff. It might be better than Jeff. Jeff is just too good. Um, the only place you really need this is in your junk decks. If not, it's going to be replaceable. You can play a Medusa. You can play a Jeff. You can play an Angela. There's other cards to play. You can play a Cable. Cable is a phenomenal card. If you decide to get Valentina, you can play a Valentina. This is not a required card. I'm going to tell you that unless you want to specifically play Clog decks or Annihilation Clog decks that are running cards like Professor X and Cannibal or um, Lockdown, or sorry, Annihilus decks that are trying to junk up the board, then you can skip this card. It's going to be in decks. You're going to have to replace it. But if you're extremely resource limited, this is not going to be a requirement. Our winner is Dot Geo, the best player in Marvel Snap. I told you months ago I thought he was the best player in Marvel Snap. He fundamentally stopped playing Marvel Snap for a month. Uh, he got bored of the game. He felt like there was no challenge left. He was in the top five forever in the Infinite Leaderboard. He won a bunch of tournaments. He came in third in the Snap World Fan World Championships. Team Italy, with both he and Comey's, won the Johnson Cup, along with Googly. Hey, Googly, hope you're doing well. He's the best player in the game, and he won with a deck that I honestly think is at best T2. I love this list. This is literally the exact bounce list I play, and usually I have like an 80% win rate with bounce. I still have like a 57% win rate with bounce, but like it's just, it's so, so, so much harder to win with. Geo dominated with this list. If you go over to It's Guest Gaming's YouTube and watch the games Geo played, he's so freaking good. It's completely insane. He plays to his outs consistently and constantly. Um, I'm going to explain how to play the list and what the win conditions are quickly, but like huge, huge props to Geo and congrats for the $500 win. Yeah, you heard that right. He won 500 bucks from this tournament. You got to start getting all these tournaments if you want the money. $700 in prizes in the Snap Judgments League coming up within the week. All right, you can find Gio at twitter.com slash dot Gio. Um, he's another one of the friends of the show who sends a lot of decks to us and helps us out where possible. Um, you need Kitty, Elsa, and Hitmonkey for this list. You cannot play without those three cards. You can try Iceman or Ham for Nico. Nico is stellar, right? Um, turning things into demons is huge. Being able to get copies of important cards is huge. Sorry, the little bug decided to land on my light. Um, yeah, but you can it's not like a requirement it's important to remember your win cons for this list because you need at least two of these three although you can make a do with the sub win cons below so you need either iron man and especially a bastard iron man you need hit monkey like with a bunch of cards right we're talking a 10 ish power hit monkey because that is power that appears on the last turn on demand and you can also win with getting like i'm talking about three ish or more demons which is doable because of the bounce package in the list Bishop, Angela, and Elsa abuse are also ways to get a lot of power. Bishop can often get to about as big as Hitmonkey, but it's visible power. So it's a lane that they can choose to compete in or not. Same thing for Angela. So it's not often as much of a win condition as much as it's a sort of control where they compete condition. Uh, Angela and Bishop fundamentally never go in the same lane. Um, Bishop is a little more important than Elsa, but not much. It's really, really close. And if you already have like Mysterio and Bast, then I can easily see it being um, altered. But... For now, that's where we are. So again, I think Geo is the very best Marvel Snap player in the world right now. I think this win with this deck proves it. I generally don't. I genuinely do not think another player in the world could have one with this deck. All right, turn one, Kitty, Hood, or Bast. Um, so I generally don't want a Kitty if I can play another one early. I'd rather get Hood or Bast down. I'm going to hold Bast unless I either have Bounce, Mysterio, or Iron Man. Sometimes Bishop and Angela, but like. Bishop and Angela quickly become Shang targets if I bass them without getting these other things, so it's not always as worth it. Um, 
I will try and if I have bounce, I can just bast and then rebast later. That's fine. I want to bounce hood. Um, I want to get as many demons as possible, so that's fine. I will almost always bast that hood because that's a plus six power string. Your hood swing, your head goes from negative three to plus three, and that's just insane. Um, basting kitty is fine, but again, not a priority. Getting kitty down is perfectly possible. The right spell for Nico is complicated and really, really depends. Uh, getting to Angela's, for example, can be huge, right? But I don't really want to put plus two on Angela or Kitty unless I immediately have a bounce. I'm sort of trying to really see that draw two or turn something into a demon if humanly possible. Um, although, again, the copy can be great. Sometimes you um, do like an early hit monkey, like if you beast on turn three and then you get the copy spell, you can end up getting a really good hit monkey off on turn four. And then you have a second hit monkey to end the game. That's awesome, too. Turn two is Angela. That's like the play, right? Um, if not, you're doing stuff with ones. But turn two is Angela. There's not like, an, see, look at the two drops. There's not another two drop you're even interested in playing on two. Turn three is Bishop versus Elson. It really depends what your hand is doing. It's generally better to get Bishop out early so he can keep growing. And you can go uh, Elsa later as required. But you're usually just choosing one of the two, to be perfectly honest, if you see both. Turn four is bounce. You want to get some cards back to your hand. If you have Iron Man, if not, you can wait to bounce on turn five. Iron Man is, again, one of your key win conditions, so you want to get it out almost always as soon as possible. Um, G almost lost in the semifinals because the opponent, Coulson, generated an Enchantress and cost him four cubes. Like, that's the kind of thing that it took to beat Geo on this day. So if you don't play Iron Man, you're going to bounce, and you're going to bounce with B specifically because Hitmonkey Mysterio are your last turn plays. That's five. That only leaves you one for a demon. Now, if you don't see um, Iron Man, though, right, your goal is to sort of manage to get three-ish demons in hand and play those three demons around turn five. Save one extra demon to play with Mysterio Hitmonkey to end the game. Then you should be able to win that way because all those demons are making your bishop and um, Angela extra huge. And then the Mysterio hit monkey put enough power on that bishop, Angela, Elsa stuff to win the game still. Cool. The um, Iron Man can also win if you don't see Hitmonkey. Again, you just need some demons because demons are the way you get the power for the other lane so you can actually win. Um, demons can be up to 24 power in a lane all by themselves, but they'll often be more because they go in a lane with Aunt Elsa, bishop, etc. You're getting one lane to the low 20s and one lane to the 30s. And your real power here is you get to determine where that happens. So you have to read your opponent. The amount of times that Geo completely ridiculously reads the opponent to win is absurd. But you have to know where the opponent's going to compete for power and where you need to go to 30 and where the 20 will win. This is the list. This is the bounce list. You have seen this bounce list on this channel so many times. If you're a longtime viewer, everyone knows I love bounce. It's my favorite archetype. Um, Look, it's got Nico in it, it's got Bishop in it, it's got like all Hitmonkey in it, it's got like all my favorite cards. I think Bounce is incredible, I think this list is fine, it's not especially fine to the meta, and I think Geo is a brilliant player. Either way, if you're interested in learning Bounce, hopefully these tips help you out, and hopefully I'm wrong, because I would love nothing as much as Bounce being really great again. All right, that's today's video. Certain tiers of support on our Patreon come with on air thanks. We are going to give a wonderful and heartfelt thank you to Abigail Gieslin, Mandatory Burnout, Cables, who just messaged me. Hope you're doing well, Cables. David G. Wingfield, Direwolf, LAB, thank you for the kind words always. Fothler Newman, check him out on YouTube. Good Dog Gamer, featured in a video on Friday. This is the way. Inc. Jay Neverie, Jaden McDonaldino, phenomenal player, needs to twist your more. Caretix Lee. Koi Ray, how you doing, Koi Ray? Arofros, the Goat Seeker, who seeks goats. Then Man Falcon, who you can check out on YouTube. Doku, Philip Bratkovich, one of our wonderful mods and excellent player. Haplo, Kenny Loggins of the Danger Zone. Rob Silverman, Juan Diego Labet, The Beza, X Force V, Skippy G, Snap Judgments League One, sorry, Snap Judgments Season One League Champion. Tommy Nyquist, Black Dahlia, The Great Kazoo, Jessica Gamble. Ryan Wood, Kev Zihora, Luna Chris, my former student, Louis Antunes, Mod Supreme Models, Brian Kaufman, welcome to the club, Tristan H. Martin, welcome to the club, Fuzzy Dunlop, awesome name, Spectrumix, Hoot, Matt H., DJ Mikey Hijinks, No Flex, who's all flex, Ocularis, Greg Sterry, Brady Chill, Seamus, Spike Jones, check him out on Two Ties, another wonderful mod. The Pirate King himself, Tucker. The Homie Men, Rito in Disguise on Twitch. And of course, Gunny T, who we need all need to thank for running 
this amazing tournament all freaking weekend. See you tomorrow. I'm going to record an extra video tonight because I got to do two videos for Tuesday. So I'm going to get that uh, Valentina video ready for y'all. If you wanted early access for any of this, by the way, you got to check out that Patreon. Peace.